Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Haladin coming at ya with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered! Today it's going to be a match between Artosis and 22-22-22 here on Circuit Breakers. Artosis played this on his Twitch stream a couple of weeks ago, and one of my subscribers reached out to me and said, Hey, I watched an excellent Artosis game over on his stream the other day. Do you think you could cast it? And I said, I'll ask him. And Artosis said, no problem. He's an excellent guy, man. He played a best of seven against Scarlet, a StarCraft II professional player in Brood War. It was a PVT series. It was very, very entertaining. I'm not going to spoil who won, but man, it was very, very good. I think the VOD is over at Tasteless's uh, Twitch channel. Maybe on a YouTube channel? I don't know. It just happened last night, but if you want to see Artosis versus Scarlet, the VOD is out there somewhere. All right, so bottom left here is a white Zerg player. His name is 222222. We're going to call him 22 for short. And in the top right, it is the Blue Terran player, Valks, otherwise known as Artosis. You probably have seen him once or twice out there casting incredible StarCraft. StarCraft 1 and StarCraft 2. He is a professional level player as well. He has competed professionally and continues to compete at a very high level as well. Great dude. Check out his YouTube channel. Link in the description. Check out his Twitch. You will not be sad. It is really, really good StarCraft and good analysis as well, right? Like some StarCraft players you watch, they're not great at looking back over their replays and being like, ah, yes, this is where I messed up or this is where they messed up or whatever. Okay, we need to turn down some brightness here, I think. Hold up. I know this is everyone's favorite thing. HD graphics, maybe? Real-time lighting. We turn that off, and now we're not... Oh, that was it. Real-time lighting was dumb. Yeah, that looks so much better. It doesn't look like an egg frying without a yolk. Anyway, we, that was a very fast pool, friends. That looked like an overpool. Uh, not super fast, right? We've talked about overpool before. Overpool is safe. It's not crazy macro-oriented. It's not crazy aggression-oriented. It's just middle of the road. If you're not entirely sure what you're dealing with here, you go for that, and then you expand at about 12 or 11 in this case. I don't think it really matters all that much. So 22-22-22 is going to be like 10 p.m., right? 10, 22, and 22 seconds. Or 2,200 hours, I guess, to speak more accurately there, but... Anywho, I don't know what to expect here. I don't believe the person who asked me to cast this game told me much about it. They just really liked it a lot. And Artosis didn't have a problem sharing it either, because he's a cool dude. So, what are we doing, ladies and gentlemen? So, it's a one Rex expander. Be my guess. Yeah, we're coming down about 400 minerals here. Going to expand about 19 supply, maybe 20 supply. Right around that area. He doesn't have any information either. He has not been scouting. The Overlord has been scouting. But, uh, just kidding. There's an SCV down here. SCV, checking the timing. Okay, Lair... Gas happening. It's going to be a Mutalisk opening. There's nothing crazy about this at all. Artosis has dealt with this a billion times, as has every Terran player who's ever played on the ladder in Brood War against Zergs before. So Bunker comes up first. He's like, all right, so that was an overpool. It was not a hatch first play, which means I need a Bunker before I can solidify my ability to take an expansion. So Bunker comes up. Marine count inside that Bunker is four just as soon as these Lings show up. So there is no, I mean, no chance to get, I don't think you can touch this at all. No run by potential either. Really well placed bunker expansion coming up here at about closer to 22, 23 supply. Maybe even 24. But again, it, based on the SCV scout, you recognize there were lings out. And if there are lings out and you only have one or two marines, you're going to have a bad time. Slow lings are not great units, but they're pretty good against unupgraded marines in small numbers. So Hydralisk Den opening here from 22, 22, 22. I am surprised by this. The SCV did scout that. Said, okay, it's not a Spire opening at all. I don't need an Engineering Bay necessarily, unless I'm worried about Lurkers. In which case, I do maybe want some turrets at the front. Maybe some turrets up here. Maybe just one turret at each location just for the detection. Maybe to ward off any drop attempts. Are we upgrading drops? No, I don't see that. Just going for Lurker Aspect at four and a half minutes. This is a super zippy Lurker opening. Usually what we see from Zerg players is they go for the Spire, they go for the harassment of the Mutalisks, they force the Terran to stay home and make turrets, spend resources on turrets, spend mining time from SCVs on making turrets, making Engineering Bay, 
And then they'll go for the Hydralisk Den and the Lurker aspect while the Mutas are doing stuff up here. And then you use the Lurker to solidify your third base. In this case, new. Not happening whatsoever, but I'm wondering if you could actually set up a contain with Lurkers here and then do the same thing. Right? Just defend your third base, maybe put some pressure up here on Artosis with Lurkers at his front door, but Double Calm Sat Station is coming in. He's working on Stim for his Marines, and it will reach a point... Ah, front bunker coming here, where he'll have enough scan to deal with Lurkers pretty effectively. That SCV came in for a secondary scout. Holy smokes. Wow, he's like, okay, so... Oh, my Queen's Nest. So he scouts the Queen's Nest that has come up for the Zerg player on two bases. I don't... What are we doing with a Hive and Lurker aspect? There are no further upgrades for the Lurkers, unless you're going for 3-3, which he's not, because it doesn't have any evolution chambers. I mean, just Dark Swarm, I guess. He's going for a two-base Lurker Dark Swarm play, like, really fast. We're at five minutes, yo. This is a five-minute Hive. That is zippy-zippy. It happens when you don't make a third base and try to saturate it. The problem is, uh, Artosis here is an excellent Terran player, and he is not really going to let you get away with that. He's on two bases, you're on two bases. There's a distinct advantage right now as the tech is starting to favor 22, but it's not there yet. It's just a bunch of Zerglings. It's maybe a couple Lurkers here and there. It is not really enough to deal with this from Artosis. Hmm. Like I said, this is a very scary window. I don't know if Artosis is worried about Lurkers being burrowed on the path. He's, I mean, he's right to do so. Because there are Lurkers burrowed on the path. But he's not even, like, poking ahead at all. I mean, I guess you could just use the stop command on these Lurkers so they don't fire. Even if you move somebody in range. So trying to poke them out is difficult to pull off, you know? Even if you get in range of it, if it's being controlled correctly, it's not going to attack you. And then you don't know where it is. And then, we've seen this a million times. Your bio is walking over it, and then, then they activate, and then everybody instantly dies. The splash is nuts. Who's jumping on this? Artosis' reaction time is not great! Okay, I guess that's the effect anyway. Goodbye, medics! Goodbye, everybody there! Yikes! Reaction time. One of the things that is hardest to do in Brood War is recognize... Everything that's happening on the map at the same time, recognize when your dudes out here are getting jumped on and get them out of the way before the attack commences in 2.8 seconds. It's hard to pull off, yo. Oh my gosh, these lurkers though. Okay, all right. These lurkers have been doing work. Five kills, three kills, five kills. Zergling, couple of these zerglings have a couple kills too. Missile turret is up, so the lurkers can't just wander into this bunker range. That won't happen, but now we have a contain. And now, more Lurkers are coming on up here. Consume's on the way. Defiler coming in. Adrenal Glands coming in. So, completely unupgraded Lings. I don't think... Do they even have speed yet? I think he got Metabolic Boost. Those Lings jumping on those Marines are pretty zippy. But, they're not going to have attack upgrades, armor upgrades. All they'll have is uh, Adrenal Glands. I don't know that I've ever seen that before. No melee upgrades at all. But then Adrenal Glands to top it off. Which seems bonkers. <laughs> Alright, well we're going to work on science vessels. But in the meantime, moving out is pretty much impossible. I would love to see 22 take a third base now. Like, right now. With this many lurkers, you are not moving out with uh, vultures. You're not moving out... With these marines. Tanks, sure. Spider mines, maybe, could get rid of these guys. But, alright, one of the lurkers gets killed, but so many marines died in the process. This contain is nuts. And now, guess that sound. That's the consume sound. I don't know if Artosis can hear that. Dark Swarm up here. Oh, the Dark Swarm is sick. The nine minute Dark Swarm is insane. Lings pull back. Lings pull back. Lings pull back. Although, friendly fire spider mines. That could have been very dangerous for Artosis. Dude, this push right here is disgusting. I kind of want to try it sometime. On the ladder myself. There is a Spire coming up back home for 22. Yeah, this bunker is dead. I mean, Lurker's not good at killing bunkers unless... 
There's Dark Swarm protecting them, and everything changes. Oh, spider Mine kills both of those vultures. And the Lurkers just la 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 la. Man, are they trying to shut down? I think they're trying to shut down this entire command center here, this natural base. Artosis is not really reacting to this. Not with these SCVs. He's like, you know what? Go ahead. It's still two base to one base. And I still have an advantage economically over this. Wow, I'm really surprised he didn't pull the SCVs out of there. Seems like a moderately poor choice to just lose all of these workers, but guess what? 22's at 18 drones, and Artosis knows that. He's like, look, in order for this to happen, Zerg must have cut his economy just incredibly hard. And he did. It's 18 drones here at 10 minutes, and two bases in order for this lurker dark swarm stuff to happen this fast. There are some lings out. The Spire is done. Ah, uh, a couple Scourge. He's worried about getting dropped, which is understandable. Like, a good Terran player will take up to drops, which Artosis did, and maybe try to get some damage that way. You're not walking out your front door, but these Lurkers are causing you problems right now. Dude, losing factories to these Lurkers is bad. Don't be doing that. But tanks are here. Siege mode's being researched on this machine shop. If he doesn't get Siege Mode research, this is going to be extremely difficult for Artosis to do this thing. I mean, yeah, look at him. He's repairing. He know He's trying to repair anyway, but Lurker Splash is sick. Did he buy... I think he bought the time to get Siege Mode done. If these Lurkers had been up here focusing on the machine shop instead of just firing on whatever they wanted... Oh, that wouldn't have been done, but guess what? Here they are, siege tanks ready to go. They're not in range of anything yet. <laughs> oh, target fired on the Defiler. Good snipe on that Defiler. Good. Mechanically very, very sound play. So now he focuses on the, lurk, uh, the factory and the machine shop. Okay, never mind. He's just going to let the machine shop die. Man, getting up. But guess what there are? There are siege tanks and there are science vessels here, man. But hold on, not actually firing on those dudes. Pulls all of the SCVs up, 25 of them still, only 18 for 22. I'm not sure that 18 has made a drone in the last five minutes. Really doesn't feel that way. All right, so the natural base, a bit of a problem. This command center is actively burning down, but very, very slowly. And these lurkers, I don't know if they're getting out. Artosis has them trapped in here. If they stop, the tanks pick them out of the ground, and if they move forward, the marines and medics get them while they're moving above ground. Some zerglings with it. Oh, that. Okay, those zerglings just got me grindered. A droid gland's pretty good. Nice hit with a scourge. Ah, Tosa should be able to hold against this. Okay, dark storm is more of a problem. Another replacement defiler has arrived. Again, this seems like it's a huge problem for Artosis, but he's on one base versus a two-basing Zerg. That has been fine for Terran since the beginning of time. As long as they could be cost-efficient with siege tanks, for example, or with marines, for example, compared to the Zerg with their Zerglings that are not super cost-efficient, and just make good trades over and over, this can work out. Ah, the Irradiate is done. The Defiler needs to consume something or and then toss something down or just yeah that is hard i get it but man ideally if your defiler gets irradiated you want to if you don't have the energy to cast dark swarm or a plague you don't have plague maybe consume something and cast something and then die if you just die it's a complete waste you can do some better work here these scvs aren't even working and i don't know that they want to be working considering the circumstances of their life right now, but hey. Alright, man. Zerglings continue to cruise on up. This is like me playing. This is, unfortunately, 22 doesn't know when to expand. Um, I like the vision, too. Checking that expansion, this expansion. Checking up this way to make sure there's not a third base anywhere. I'm very much the kind of player that will get... I'll do a bunch of damage to a Terran off a of two base and be like, Yes! Continue pushing, continue doing damage. 
but I'm not making good trades. The Terran player is just working on a big scary army inside of his main base while I'm happily shutting down his natural while I'm on two bases. And then eventually the Terran moves out and kills me. And I kind of feel like that's what we're looking at right now. Is, uh, is this marine tank ball just crushing? Again, I want to point out, these are 0, zero Zerglings. They have speed. They have adrenal glands. They don't have any attack or armor upgrades. For some reason, we're going to base Ultralisk. On the, dude, is this me? Did I play this game? It's something I would do. You'll notice the Marines have plus one attack. This counterattack is looking pretty deadly. Uh, there again, another small window where the Zerg player is trying to go for Ultralisks. Hey, look, a third base is done down here. You got a third, I just feel like it's too late. Where the Zerg player is trying to go for Ultras, so they're saving up money and not making units, and that leaves them very vulnerable to attack. But again, it seems like Artos is not interested in really trying to kill anything right now. I think he's happy as long as the Zerg player doesn't have a third gas. Then he's okay with it. He's not really worried about this minerals only setup down here, which maybe he should. Right? That's a lot of Zerglings you can make, but again, the Zerglings without upgrades aren't as good. Overlord Transport coming in. 22 recognizes against a good Terran player. Having transports, having dropper lords is always a very nice thing to do. Although, if your opponent's going this much bio, less good for dropping on the army because the Marines will pick you out of the sky. But dropping into the main base can be pretty neat. That's why these spider mines exist. Dropping on the natural can be pretty effective here, too. Again, the more bases the Terran has, the more spread out they are, and the more susceptible they are to those drops. But is that another starport? I see a lot of science vessels here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's four racks, two factories, going to be two starports here. This is working. Marine, medic, science vessel, tank. It's a good, strong composition. It's got what you need in order to irradiate things like Ultras and Defilers. See how slow Ultras are without that speed upgrade? You're used to seeing them fast because we always get that upgrade with Ultras, but... And then the, it finishes, and now they're zippy zippy, but... Ah, uh, the irradiates are good. Oh, he plagued his own Ultra. He did catch both of the Science Vessels. Both of the Defilers died, but this poor Ultralisk... He's just hold positioning in the Dark Swarm. He's like, look, man. You want to come in here and fight me, I'll fight you. But otherwise, I'm not going out there because I have been plagued by my own defiler. Oh, all them vultures are dead. All right, well. Nice target firing. Ah, oh, those Scourge, though. It's more more the idea of making sure the Scourge are flying over your Marines using your science vessels. And then the Marines take care of it. It's not really target firing. It's just more positioning of your science vessel. Anyway, 106 to 76 total supply. Third base is happy. Zergling trying to make sure this isn't super easy. Ow. Well, they sacrifice all their lives to kill a couple of vultures. In the end, I'm not sure that's exactly what you want to be going for. But hey, what do you do? What do you say? <laughs> that's better. Two Zerglings for a vulture. All right, better trade. Better trade overall. I, I don't... Yeah, going up a ramp versus a Terran ill-advised. That is an unadvised action. With Dark Swarm, it's better. Oh, oh, see the Science Vessel control here? Oh, that's so good. And a better Zerg player would pull those Scourge away when they recognize they can't get the Science Vessels. They'll try again. A lesser Zerg player like 22 here did not do that. This is a pretty small Marine tank army. Oh, the spider mine's causing way more damage than the Ultras would have there. And he shoves Artosis off of that high ground. But Artosis is fully on two bases. He's got 45 SCVs. Somehow the droning has happened here for 22, or he's at 26 workers now. Which is great. Battle cruisers in production. Okay. All right. Hey, JLC, if you're watching this, that's two Battlecruiser games in a week, man. Less than a week. I hope you are pleased as Punch. I am pleased as Punch. I love Battlecruisers. They're very fun. You do not see them in StarCraft Brood War unless it's in TVT where they're somewhat frequent. You never see them against Protoss. And sometimes you see them against Zerg. And sometimes they lead to losses against Zerg. Because 
Like, yeah, you can kill lings and ultralisks with battle cruisers, but like not super duper fast. And you're putting a lot of resources into something that can't kill your enemy that quickly. It's rough. I mean, if you have the support, obviously, of science vessels, it's good. If you can Yamato the Ultras to soften them up before you burn them down with your turbo laser, yes, that's fine. What's it called? An ATA laser battery? ATS? Uh, yeah, it's 25 damage each. It doesn't really matter. Some Lurk- Oh, Lurker drops back here at the natural. Nicely done. Really, really nicely done here. By 22. Both the Lurkers get irradiated. Third base trying to come up. Ling's trying to make sure that doesn't happen. Adrenal Gland Ling's, man. Even, again, without great upgrades, going to be fine. Southern base trying to come up. 22 is suddenly turning into a bit of a macro player here. I guess, okay, the Ling's have armor. They have the armor upgrade. Good for them. Ling's trying to clear out spider mines with their little bodies. Dang, he actually... Uh, didn't die to two spider mines. The luckiest. The luckiest Ling. A book written by Falcon Paladin. By the way, quick plug. I am putting together a Brood War tournament for subscribers here. For YouTube subs and Twitch followers and basically uh, people who aren't paying for my content but are choosing to follow me on either of those platforms. There's a link in the description for more information about it. It's going to be on Sunday. Check it out. Um... It's going to be a $200 prize pool that I put up. It's in celebration of me reaching a uh, threshold for a goal. Just on Patreon.com slash Falcon Paladin. So give that a check if you want to play. I don't know the levels of the people that have signed up already. So it's it's an open, though. So it doesn't really matter what league you're in. I imagine there are some maybe you know Code B, Code A players in there. I don't know if any Code S players watch me but or have signed up. I'm just saying, there might be somebody who ruffle stomps their way through the thing. So don't, like, don't go in there expecting to win the 200 bucks unless you are maybe Code S yourself, which, hey, welcome to the channel if you're Code S. <laughs> Ultralisks. Yeah. He's got the four armor, which is fine. This is scrappy, man. These lurkers causing problems. These lurkers causing problems in the neighborhood. There's only 29 SCVs for Artosis right now. That does not seem all that ideal. Plus three Marines, though. Wow, somehow we snuck in plus two and plus three. But guess what we're doing? We're bringing science vessels. We're bringing the battle cruisers. I don't know if there are any Scourge, but battle cruisers with enough upgrades will one-shot the Scourge as they try to approach them. Hard to make Scourge work in that situation. Ah! The Spider Mines are just making sure the Lings and the Ultras are not exactly what they are, you know? Alright, so this battle cruiser's job, oh, it was to take down the 6 o'clock base. This third base going down would be a bit of a problem. Is he just. Wow, this is the response. This is a Falcon response. There's battle cruisers in my base. Counterattack with all the Lings and the Ultras. Go, 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 and kill all the other stuff. But there's nothing still to really deal with the BCs on the other end, which are better at killing Zerg stuff than Lings and Ultras are at killing Terran stuff, because Terran stuff can lift. Just as a general principle. Oh boy. Uh, that said, there's really not much to kill these dudes other than the spider mines in the top left quadrant there. Spores are up. Hiders are here. Did the Scourge make their attempts? Um, they made their run. Ah, you can't stop! Oh, it went after the Science Vessel and got denied. So we're kind of base racing, but that Irradiated Ultra is really a problem for the other Lings and Ultras here. Income for both players is in the toilet right now. Nobody has much income whatsoever. I mean, technically... Well, there's gas income here at the 6 o'clock, but blah. Blah, 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 blah. And look, the buildings are lifting. This is what I'm talking about. Artosa's nose. That's all you gotta do, man. Your opponent shows up with a million lings and ultras. Just lift. So, I mean, the science vessels are a problem. You can't run away from battle cruisers if you are a Zerg building, no? So, that's nice. But again, no income for Artosis at all. Zero percent income. 
Careful with your, yeah, careful with your science vessels there. So there's spores ahoy. But yeah, as long as you take out 22's ability to harm buildings, you're gonna be okay. Because right now, there's nothing on the board that can harm them buildings. Okay. Ah, I found the Defiler. Defensive Matrix. Such a good spell sometimes. Always a good spell. I don't know. This Ultra Alisk has seven kills. Not bad. But there's only one Zergling left of the group that showed up here. Irradiates are great. The Battle Cruisers, one of them is really injured, but yeah. Otherwise, we're okay. 13, 11, 6, 5 kills on these guys. Yamato. It takes two Yamatos to kill a Spore or one Yamato and a bunch of random hits. Is he not even not even worried about this Battle Cruiser that's really close to death? He's like, the Spores won't target that one. He's not even defensive matrixing the dead one. That's amazing. Good play! Well played, says 22. He taps out and Artosis wins this thing with Battle Cruisers in 25 minutes and 45 seconds. And chooses not to leave the game after this victory. <laughs> he is reveling in the victory here today. And I can't say that I blame him for that. And there it is. He decides, fine. Good enough. Time's up. Time's up. Good one. That was a really good match. Thanks for recommending that. I don't remember who it was, but if, like, if you're watching this and you're like, ah, oh, Falcon finally cast that game. Yes. I appreciate the help with that. Uh, just, again, if you have a game that you'd like me to cast that you have a replay for or you know who I can ask for it, give it a shot. But hit that like button if you enjoyed that, by the way. That was... That was a magnifique. Magnifique. So, end of the day, I mean, what it came down to was the Zerg player did not expand fast enough. He eventually got to three and four bases, but he did not have that third base for some time. And yes, he was denying the Terrans its natural base, but didn't really do much to the main for the first 10, 15 minutes of the game. And there was just enough, just Marines and tanks teching up to battle cruisers behind it. There was no answer for BCs. Getting on this economy, getting this third extractor was way too late to try to combat these battle cruisers. Maybe some Devourers would have been awesome. Hydras, obviously, with Dark Swarm would have been sick. But not enough Hydras popping up by the time the BCs arrived. I'm pretty sure 22 got surprised by them. Which I've been surprised by BCs before. So I get it. I get it. But yeah, if you're a Zerg player on two bases trying to kill a Terran, you have to do more than shut down their natural. Because they're fine with that. They were ahead with two bases. On one base, they're even. On one base, they're even. And unless you start really going after their production, really killing their SCVs, really slowing them down to the point where they have fewer workers than you do, it's not going to work out for you in the long run. And that's, that's what happened. He tried to get some lurker stuff in here, but Artosis kept his dudes alive for the most part, teched up to science vessels with Irradiate, and knew exactly what to do to counter this particular strategy. There were some Scourge, but obviously not enough. And the Spores, not enough either. Not against Battle Cruisers with Yamato and Defensive Matrix. Uh, support here from the science vessels. A plague would have been sick. There was plague. We did see it get it tossed down. I think it might have actually killed more Zerg units than than others, <laughs> than anything else. Any Terran units? <laughs> uh, okay, let's check out that final score, shall we? We shall. End of the day. Very close match, man. One hundred and one thousand points for Artosis. 98,000 points for 22. Produced about the same number of units, which is not great if you're a Zerg player. You want to out-produce your Terran opponent pretty much in every circumstance. So the fact that this is even as bad. Structures raised. Did a good job killing Terran buildings, for sure. But when 12 Zerg buildings die in 20 minutes, that's not good. And then 22, way more gas mined. Even on the two bases he was on for most of the game, Martosis was locked out of his natural for some time. Minerals about the same, and then did outspend the Terran player by about 4,000 minerals, which is pretty good. But again, if your opponent is spending those resources on something you don't have an answer for, like battle cruisers, then it doesn't matter. So, uh, yeah, you can be great. You can be just out expanding everything that the Terran player is doing, but if he shows up with something you can't deal with, that's it. All right, good stuff. And that's going to be it for me. So this has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered. Go ahead, hit that like button. 
hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.